Mr. Jessup, I've found it. Rodney's passport is here. Glenda's passport is here, too. I don't understand. Don't you? They can't be making passionate love under a Mediterranean sky, can they? Not without their passports, they can't. You know what this means. I think so. A bar in Marbella. Bull. They're probably running a pub in Skegness. Oh? <laughs> yeah? Oh. Yes? Oh, it's a lover's leap. Sappho and Phaon, Avalar and Eloise, Romeo and Juliet. Oh, my God! I'm a widow! <laughs> oh, no. Supposing she... Oh, my God. No. Us car keys. <laughs> come on, come on. Who's there? My son-in-law has instructed me never to open the door at night. This is your son-in-law. <laughs> so what? I'll explain later. What are you doing out there? Waiting for you to open the front door. <laughs> but Sam, you're in your pajamas. I know. He must have had an offer he couldn't refuse. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, Sam Jessup, open the door. I'm freezing. Do you know what time it is? Go away. Not until I know you're all right. I was worried. Look, will you? Oh, Lord, Mrs. King's woken up and she gathers more news than Reuters. <laughs> Keep out of the light. Is there anyone there? Two knots for yes, one knot for no. <laughs> I was worried I'd dash straight round. Oh, I suppose it's all right you're being here. Well, if I was going to seduce you, I'd hardly have been so unsubtle as to arrive wearing pyjamas. <laughs> no, I suppose not. Why on earth did you come round? Uh, it, it may have escaped your memory that the last time we spoke, you screeched, Oh, my God, I'm a widow, and hung up. Then you'd obviously taken the phone off. What was I supposed to do? Pop round tomorrow morning to make sure you hadn't... Killed myself, you mean? Yes. Oh, no, I wouldn't do a thing like that. For one thing, it's illegal. You can be arrested for suicide. <laughs> Not if you succeed. <laughs> Women. Besides, if Rodney and Glenda had taken their own lives, what would be the point of me joining them? It would just make a very awkward threesome in heaven. Why should they kill themselves? They're the one who was having all the fun. How do you so romantically put it? Bonking in Marbella? <laughs> well, we know they're not in Marbella, but you can bet your life they're at it like knives somewhere else. <laughs> Rather than kill themselves, they'll probably die of exhaustion. It's at the bottom of everything, really, isn't it? What is? 
Sex. I suppose you could put it like that. <laughs> How ironic if that's why he went off with Glenda. Sex. With me, he was the one who usually had the headache. <laughs> you look frozen. Would you like a drop of cooking brandy in your coffee? Oh, uh, thanks. Thank you. Did you know that women are only supposed to have 14 units of alcohol a week? Men can have 21. Typical. Trust men to get the right end of the lollipop. <laughs> oh, it's so marvellous being a man, is it? Well, perhaps you can explain why I'm supposed to be continually lectured about equal rights for women, and I'm still supposed to give my seat up for one on the bus. Men and we're equal. That's fine. So perhaps you could explain <clears throat> why it is that we always have to fish the spider out of the bath and have the turkey leg at Christmas. <laughs> men and women are equal. Perhaps you can explain why, although Glenda left me, if she chooses not to marry Rodney, I shall have to pay her alimony. If you can persuade Rodney to pay me alimony, you can have my extra seven units of alcohol. <laughs> Your coffee's getting cold. You do get worked up about things, don't you? I get passionate about things sometimes, if that's what you mean. I'm going to go when I've drunk this. Now that you're not... Dead? Yes. <laughs> How can you sit there so calm? It's not some kink I have, you know, rushing about the town in the middle of the night, in the freezing cold, dressed only in my pyjamas, raincoat, and my son's football scarf. Oh, uh, my God, I'm a widow. What do you expect me to think? I'm sorry, but I'm not going to slash my wrist just to please you. Why didn't you phone me? Because you'd left the blasted phone off the hook. <laughs> oh, yes. You're the one that started all this drama. Look at you. You're not even upset. Not upset. Not... Of course I'm upset, you stupid man. Now, don't you... Not upset. Inside, I'm crying. I gave up crying outside a few days ago because I'd shed so many tears since Rodney left. I was in danger of causing a drought in my tear ducts. Not upset. And what a... What a... An inadequate little word that is. Are you upset when you shave every morning and you look at yourself in the mirror and you say, I'm a failure. My wife has left me. Because I bet you do say something like that. I know I do. I look at myself in the mirror when I'm making up and I say, why aren't you prettier? Why aren't you more fascinating? Why aren't you glamorous? Because if you were, you might still have a husband. Just in case the rains come. <laughs> Please don't be kind. You'll just start me off. Now, you listen to me, Mrs. Tyndall. Rosie. We've got so much in common, I think we can progress to Christian names, don't you? You are just as pretty as Glenda. Uh, pretty, actually. So we can knock that one on the head for a start. I don't know why Rodney left you. Hell's bells. I, I don't even know why Glenda left me, really. I suppose they... They just grew out of us. You make us sound like a pair of old socks. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to make you another cup of coffee before I go. It's, uh, it's past one and I'm supposed to be in fine fettle to face the flotsam and jetsam of the state education system. Why does that? Well, let's just say there's nothing wrong with education at my school that a little learning couldn't put right. Oh. <laughs> On my right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Kenneth Baker. On my left, the Inner London Education Authority. And while the bum fight goes on, we're left in the middle with the kids who can't even read. Well, lots of children are slow to learn to read. Mm. At 16. <laughs> Here you are. By the way, where's Rodney? According to you, bonking somewhere other than Marbella. I meant dog Rodney, not man Rodney. Oh, well, he's still such a baby, and I'm worried that he misses his mother, so I let him sleep at the end of my bed. 
he's still up there. I don't think somehow he's going to make a very good guard dog, do you? <laughs> His track record so far wouldn't indicate so. Still, he's a lovely cuddle. And that's what we all need sometimes, isn't it? Never mind love, sex, erogenous zones. We just need a good cuddle. Yes. Aren't you going to have another cup? Oh, no. Uh... I must go. I haven't sat up so late since Bill Haley arrived at Waterloo Station. <laughs> Paul, may I telephone you tomorrow? I mean, we ought to talk about what we're going to do about Glenda and Rodney. Do? Yes. Are we going to track them down? Oh, well, I haven't thought. The night has been full of other dramas. <laughs> Even if we did find them, I'm not sure that I'm ready yet to say, come home, all is forgiven. Oh, I'd like Rodney to come home for a while. Really? Why? So that I could make his life hell. <laughs> well, we'll sleep on it, eh? Right. <laughs> Please leave quietly. If I'd stayed a bit later, I could have uh, left disguised as the milkman. That would have been even worse. <laughs> Good try, pal. But if we've been burglars, you're about half an hour too late. <laughs> well, good night, or rather, good morning. Sleep tight. Oh, I'm not going to bed. I couldn't sleep now. I'm going to get my manual and have another go at trying to mend that blasted car. What? Now? Now. It's become something of a crusade. Well. Bye. A little to the right, please. Right. Right! Don't you know the difference between your right and your left? Of course I do. My right is not my left. <laughs> what? Well, I used to have a little trouble telling my right from my left. Really? And then I solved it. I remembered that I write with my right. Therefore, my right is my right and not my left. Clever, eh? Breathtaking. <laughs> There's no need to be so damned patronizing. Nobody asked you to come back here. You said you could mend it, so mend it. After all, you're a man. Now, if you give me... You're a woman, right? Right. Therefore, your only interests are cooking, sewing and washing up. It's all you want to do with your life, right? Wrong. Right. I'm a man, right? Right. Therefore, I am good at heaving coal, hewing wood, and mending cars, right? Wrong. Right. <laughs> so let's stuff the role play and get on with it, right? Right. Right. <coughs> right. Right. <laughs> Nick. Nick. Awake. Oh, I am now. What's up? His dad. His bed hasn't been slept in. Oh, crikey. Well, I told him last night you'd go and pull a bird, but I didn't expect him to take my advice that quickly. Oh, don't be stupid. He's hardly likely to have rushed out into the street and flagged down a passing woman, is he? <laughs> I suppose not. It's funny, isn't it, though? How you can never imagine your parents actually doing it. Mm. <laughs> they must have, though. It's true. <laughs> Do you two know what time it is? What's going on? Well, that's what we'd like to know. Dad's bed hasn't been slept in. Good Lord. Not home yet. <laughs> he made a telephone call, and he rushed out of the house in his pyjamas. <laughs> he must have been on to a good thing. <laughs> oh, Dad. Dad? 
You are talking about our father? Of course I am. But your father's not exactly a vestal virgin, you know. You can't expect him to go without his oats forever. <laughs> no, no, lads. I need my beauty sleep. <coughs> Gosh. Perhaps there really is sex after 40. <laughs> I suppose you have got petrol in this damn thing. <laughs> Just asking. Do you actually know anything about mending cars? And just what prompted that remark? Nothing really, it's just that you've loosened and tightened the same nut four times now. <laughs> it pays to be thorough. <laughs> Have you looked into the carburetor, Mars? I've looked into the very jaws of death. <laughs> and you wonder why Glenda left you. I could give you a few hints. Thanks. For a start, you've got a very short fuse. So don't light it. <laughs> yeah, you see, we can't even have a normal conversation without A normal it. conversation? This is like Judge Jeffrey's bloody assizes. It's the Star <laughs> Chamber. It's the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> now. I'm going to try and start this damn thing again. So just keep quiet, woman. Right. Right! If you think I'm going to be beaten by a foreigner... with mum no I am not oh I wouldn't have minded how generous of you it's it's what mum needs a, a spot of sex would take her mind off things settle her a bit settle her you make it sound as if sleeping someone is an antidote for indigestion it probably is and it's a lot more fun than a glass of liver salts <laughs> what's the matter don't you fancy mum uh, Young lady, I do not wish to pursue this conversation. Why not? I believe one should be totally frank about one's sexuality. Yes. Well, I come from a generation where if you were totally frank about your sexuality, you usually ended up getting a slap in the face. Either that or the girl's brothers would come round and have a word with you. <laughs> well, now you're grown up and Mum's grown up. So I'd just get on with it if I were you. Well, you two, what have you been talking about? Oh, this and that. Mostly that. Um, hmm. Oh, it, uh, what must the time be? It's, uh, it's light. I yes. must go home. My uh, family will be worried. You're not going up my front path dressed like that. What do you suggest I do? Tunnel out? <laughs> He's got a short fuse. Really? Oh, then for my mother's sake, forget our conversation. <laughs> What? Uh, nothing. Nothing. I suppose you wouldn't care to borrow a pair of Rodney's trousers? No, thank you. Rodney's trousers, figuratively speaking, have given me quite enough trouble as it is. <laughs> How about rolling up your pyjamas above your knees? Then they wouldn't show under your Mac. No, but my bare legs and my slippers would. I would look like a flasher. <laughs> You're not being very helpful. Mrs. Tyndall? Miss Tyndall, I am going home. It is not my fault 
that I am dressed merely in my pyjamas. It is not my fault that the dawn has come up like thunder out of China crossed the bay. It is not my fault that your next door neighbor has eyes like a hawk and a mind like a sewer. I am going home. He's going home. Look, as I'm the only one who's dressed, I'll go and keep Katie by Mr. Jessup's car. Mum, you can be lookout. And then when the going's clear, he can make a run for it. My God, it would be easier to escape from Alcatraz. <laughs> right. Are we ready? Ready. Go on. You know, if Mrs. King does see you, it'll be all over the avenue by 11, sis. Oh, yes. And even if the ladies of the avenue don't believe it, they'll love repeating it. <laughs> Do you think I should black my face? You're enjoying this far too much, young lady. Get on with it. <laughs> Good morning, Mrs. Tyndall. <laughs> oh. ah. Good morning, Mrs. King. <laughs> So are you. <laughs> I believe you know my daughter Sally. And this is. This is. <laughs> this is my mother's lover. <laughs> Sometimes, when she's feeling particularly generous, she lets me share him. <laughs> Goodbye, Mrs. King. Possibly I could fit you in as well next time. <laughs> we took it for granted. We left it to fade. We thought it would work. too late. They say that love is blind. And truly ours was so blinding. We didn't see it falling apart. Just like a favorite book that's losing its finding. At 6.30 next Monday, Sam is alarmed to see Rosie in a state of collapse. And we'd get it back. Somehow the strength we needed was just what we lacked.